Hey YouTube, Jim here. Welcome to Top 10 Archive. Inca mythology is a mystery to many of us, as we know many more stories about gods of the Roman and Greek Empire. For us, other gods could be just as wrathful and petty as the ones we see in Disney films. However, this is hardly true. Inca gods, for one, are full of interesting stories, all related to the earth, the elements, and the things that impact our daily life. Come along on this journey and we'll explore the top 10 most powerful Inca gods of mythology. But before we get started, why not become an archivist today by clicking that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. If you end up enjoying this video, let us know by giving it a thumbs up and in the comments section, tell us which mythical being is your favorite. Number 10, Apu. Apu is the god or spirit of the mountains. Seeing as the Incas had their home among many mountains, you can imagine that this god was very important to them. In fact, all important mountains have their very own Apu. Some will even receive sacrifices to bring out some aspects of their being. They're not alone. Some rocks and caves can also have their own Apu. Apu is represented often in gold, as a small god with a big crown and large plugs on his earlobes. The word Apu has a variety of meanings, including lord, home, or temple, which truly all make sense if you're living in the South American mountains. Number 9. Kavalas Kavalas is known as the virgin goddess. She's powerful in the hierarchy, often placed just below Apu. However, she is as moody as she is strong. Kavalas was approached by another god in humble native dressing, and she turned down his efforts to seduce her. She ate a fruit, which turned out to be the sperm of this man, who was actually the moon god Kanaraya, the Inca's moon god. She later gave birth to a son. Shocked, she demanded that someone step forward and take responsibility. When no one did, she set the baby on the ground, and it naturally crawled towards Kanaraya. This god wasn't exactly the most powerful of all gods, and to add, he was still wearing his humble clothes. Kavalas wasn't thrilled that her stature would now be affected by him, so she ran away to the coast of Peru and transformed herself and her son into rocks. Number 8. Ikeko The god of hearth and wealth or prosperity, Ikeko is the god you want to approach with the things you want. In fact, little dolls of him are made for people's homes, and onto them, people attach many tiny versions of the things they want. If done right, the person is said to receive them. He is especially celebrated during Bolivia's Alicitas Festival. He's an interesting looking fellow, and offerings to him include clipping banknotes to him and even putting cigarettes in his mouth. When offered grain, he'll provide a good harvest. Number 7. Viracocha Originally, he was the main god of the Inca Empire. He was the creator of everything. However, after Pachacuti became emperor, he changed the god's importance, pointing out that it was not him, but Inti, who was the most important god. He's intimately associated with the ocean, which again, just makes sense, doesn't it? He's represented often wearing the sun as a crown, holding thunderbolts and crying rain. He was so deeply relatable that there have been several controversies related to the skin color of his representations and his association with the Christian God. Number 6. Mama Cocha This is pretty interesting because we don't just learn about their culture from their deities, but also about their knowledge and wisdom. First, we know that though Viracocha is associated with the sea, there is only one true mother of the sea, and that is Mama Cocha. She's the goddess of the fish and the sea, of sailors and fishermen. Some legends say she's the mother of Inti and Mama Kila, who she had with Viracocha. Her importance varied, of course, seeing a peak with those who lived along the coast. Her existence is proof that the Incas understood the hydrological cycle going from the rivers and the sea and to the rain, replenishing itself. Number five, Ilapa. The weather god. Ah, oh, this is so appropriate, don't you think? Like, hey, you may be the sun or the rain, but the weather is a force all on its own. Just look at hurricanes, tornadoes, and other devastating storms. You better believe there's a feisty god behind that. His holiday is celebrated on July 25th, 
and he's said to keep the Milky Way in a jog, using it to create rain. He's represented as a man wearing shiny clothing, carrying a club and stones. It's as if he's preparing to stone us all to death, but with weather. He also has his time as the main god during the kingdom of Kula. Number four, Parisia. Contrary to how it may sound to the average listener, Parisia, first of all, is a male god. Second of all, he sent a flood to kill all humanity who did not adequately respect him. Seeing as we've been having kind of crazy weather, you know, perhaps we should consider being a little more respectful to him and avoid being wiped out entirely. Just saying. Hey, he's also a dragon and a patron for fertility, planting, and harvesting. Number three, Mama Sarah or Sarah Mama. Goddess of grain. She was the mother and patron of the maize grown in the empire, especially of the grain that grew in multiples. These strange species would actually be turned into doll representations of the goddess. Why is she number three on our list? Corn is one of the most important harvests in the region. In many ways, corn is sustenance. Corn is life. So, of course, it's important to respect and honor the god of the spoon that feeds you. Sarah Mama is often represented nude with corn husks placed on her as a crown or on her body. Number two, Pachamama. Pachamama is literally Mother Nature. She is without a doubt the most well-known and important deity in the Incan culture and tradition. She is second only to the sun. She's the Earth Mother, the patron of time, the mother of everything and everyone. She was married to Parisia, or Pachacamac, who, like we said, is very powerful. While her husband sends floods with his powers, she herself is capable of creating powerful earthquakes to shake up her creation and its inhabitants. Pachamama, it's said, was actually translated to the Virgin Mary in the Christian and Catholic traditions later on. Number one, NT, the sun god. Seeing as how we are literally nothing without the sun, you have to have a sun god in all cultures. He's the source of warmth, light, and a protector of the people. He was the most important god. People can live without mountains. They can live, though not as easily, without a harvest or wealth, but there is no living without the sun. The Inca emperors were even considered direct lineal descendants of Inti. Inti is the son of the mother of everything, Pachamama, and the sky god, Pachahik. Sometimes he's also described as Pachamama's husband. Eh, maybe he was both. You know how some gods can be. His sister was Mama Kila, the moon goddess, and they were both considered benevolent gods. Enti's children were said to have been taught the arts of civilization, which they then passed down, building the Inca capital in Cusco. In 1571, a large golden disc representing the sun god was taken by the conquistadors and sent to the Pope. It was then lost. Thanks for watching. Fascinating info, right? If you could, which one of these Incan gods would you like to meet, or at least have on your side? Tell us about it in the comments section below. We've got a couple more video suggestions for you to watch from Top 10 Archive. But before you do, get info on our newest vids by subscribing and clicking the notifications bell. Oh yeah, and please give this video a thumbs up if you learned some little something from it. Just one little thing? Oh, come on guys. Thank you.